time to break down all of the latest free agency rumors. Yes. We'll start things off with Danny Green perhaps declining his options. Yes, and th this one's pretty likely at this point. Not surprising at all. Giving this one three heads. He is a player option for $10 million. Now, this is Danny Green, one of the best three-point shooters in basketball. I know he's starting to age a little bit, but with how the cap has moved, he's been one of the biggest bargains in the NBA. Look, if Marcus Smart can get $15 million a year on his new contract, Danny Green is going to be looking for 13 to 14 mil as well. He's probably looking for his last long-term deal with the Spurs. I wouldn't be surprised if they gave him maybe a three-year, $41, $42 million deal with maybe a team or a player option in year three. He doesn't really know what he's going to do, but he says that he's happy with the Spurs and he's not going to go anywhere else. So if you're a Spurs fan, don't worry. Danny Green isn't leaving. He might just want more money. All right, so three heads on that. How about the Rockets? Are they okay with paying Chris Paul? According to everyone, including Adrian Wojnarowski and Daryl Morey, yes, they are. For crying Jordans on this one, they are absolutely okay paying Chris Paul. Look, they didn't trade for him to just have him for a year right. and let him walk in free agency. They, there's a quote from, uh, from Woj in his article saying, they'll live with paying 46 to $47 million to Chris Paul in his late 30s. Now, it makes a lot of sense. Look, Chris Paul turned down $200 million with the Clippers. He could have gotten the Supermax with them, decided to, to opt out and also get traded to the Rockets. Look, he's going to get paid. The Rockets are going to pay him. They're going to take care of Chris Paul before they go after LeBron. Expect Chris Paul to end up being one of the highest players, uh, paid players in basketball next year. It, it is going to be a true magic show to see what Daryl Morey is going to be able to do with the cap if they can get LeBron. I can't wait to see it. All right, so four heads there. Let's go to number three here. Are the Knicks setting themselves up for, not this summer, next summer? I'm Harris. sorry, Knicks fans. Yes, indeed, they are. Four crying Jordans in this one. The Knicks, they're not punting next season. But look, without Chris Epps Porzingis playing probably the first couple months of basketball, he's probably not coming back until mid-December. Probably would be a good way to, a uh, good time frame for it. They're looking at next summer. And to be totally honest, it makes a lot of sense. A lot of their big contracts are coming off the books. They're hopefully going to have traded Courtney Lee and uh, Joaquin Noah by then to get their ridiculous contracts off the books. And by that time, it's going to be about you know $64 million. They'll have Tim Hardaway's deal that they'll have to pay. They'll obviously have to give Perzingis an extension. But with everything working out the way it should by next offseason, the Knicks could have two max slots like the Lakers this offseason. And to be totally honest, there are a lot of great free agents that they could pick up. If Klay Thompson doesn't sign any deal with the Warriors, he will. Just He's going to be a free agent. Maybe it, you know, a bad relationship. Maybe they lose the finals and Klay's the fall guy. Who knows? Carl Anthony Towns will be a, a free agent then. Kemba Walker, who we reported last week, could yep. be an option for the Knicks this offseason. DeAndre Jordan will most likely be a free agent. And we'll see what the Pacers want to do with Miles Turner. But look, there are a lot of options for the Knicks. I think we could see them really make a big time impact in the next offseason. They bring in another uh, quality young player uh, in the draft this year, and they have Chris Stapps for Zingas. I like it. Kawhi? Question mark next maybe. year? Maybe. <laughs> and now, the reason I don't have Kawhi on there, mind you, along with LeBron James and a couple other players, they will have player options this year. So yep. they're not technically going to be free agents, but if they all decline their player options, then they would be. Are the Knicks still a year away from contending in reality? I think they're multiple years away from contending. They're playing the long game. They're doing this right. They have Chris Tapps Porzingis, who's unbelievably young. Frankie Smokes is super young and really raw. They are playing the long game on this. They're waiting to see what happens with LeBron. They're waiting to see what happens with the 76ers and the Celtics. They're playing this close to the chest. They're doing everything right. And they've got to get rid of those garbage Phil Jackson contracts. All righty, let's get to rumor number four here for the NBA free agency season. And do the Nets want to add a stretch four? Yes, they do. Four crying Jordans on this one. You know, it's the Nets, so we won't spend too much time on this. But they do indeed. Uh, you know, I I've loved what the Nets have done so far in terms of free agency and the draft. I think that they've tried to retool as good as any team in the NBA with the lack of picks that they've had. I mean, in theory, they should have both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum on their team, and they just don't. So, yes, I do think they're going to add a stretch four. They'll probably look for someone in the draft. I think someone maybe like a Mo Wagner, who we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, in a little bit here. I doubt they spend some big money in free agency. I think they have some options. We actually put together a few stretch four options for the Brooklyn Nets for this offseason. Maybe they sign a veteran like Ersan Ilyasova. Jeff Green can be considered a stretch four as well. His game play, or his style has changed over the past couple of seasons. Mo Wagner, Amari Spellman, the kid out of Villanova, and then Jonte Porter there out of Missouri. So they have a couple different options at the stretch four spot. They don't have a pick until the end of the first round, but I think Wagner would be a great fit on the Nets. 
All right, let's go to rumor number five here. Are the 76ers eyeing Paul George? Yes, they are. The, the, we can give this one three crying Jordans. It's almost a confirmation. Obviously, it's not an official report from the team, so it's only going to remain three heads for now. But look, I... I I, if I'm Paul George, I'm pretty pissed because of course all of the are. reports that keep coming out about me is that I'm a second option. I'm a second option for the Sixers. I'm a second option for the Rockets. I might be a second option for the Lakers. Do you know what team he's not a second option on right now? The Thunder. And I think that's going to go a long way in his free agency. Good point. He's probably really mad that his entire free agent future is based off LeBron James. And our second note there, look, the 76ers might be better off going after Paul George and LeBron. He's younger. He'd be a much better fit on the court with, uh, with Embiid and Simmons. I just don't think he appreciates how his free agency has been handled Can so far. Can he be that mad, though? I would. It's LeBron. But it, it doesn't matter. You're Paul George. You're a multi-time All-Star whose entire career before he went to the Thunder has revolved around LeBron James. He kept getting trashed in the Eastern Conference by LeBron for multiple years. He finally leaves the Thunder. Here we go. Paul George about to get a huge money contract. And again, it's all about LeBron James. Look, these guys have huge egos. They're multi-millionaires. They, they're, you know, they've been the number one guy on their basketball team since middle school. If I'm Paul George, the only team that's treating me like the number one option is the Thunder right now. And I think all these reports of, oh, he's the second option for the Sixers and the second option for this and that. I think Paul George is pissed, and I think it gives the Thunder an advantage. All right, we'll see what happens there. How about the Rockets and Paul George? Not three heads here. We're only giving it two. Well, I'm actually surprised that this is the first that we're hearing about this because, look, the Rockets went after Paul George last offseason once they got Chris Paul. So we're going to give this one two crying Jordans for now. More of a surprise for me, I thought we would be hearing rumors about this all throughout the season that – if the Rockets couldn't get LeBron, they'll go after Paul George. Look, Paul George and Daryl Morey have a good relationship off the court. Daryl Morey has tried to trade for Paul George multiple times, multiple times. Last offseason, two offseasons before that, once he kind of saw that he could get nothing done with the Pacers and beating LeBron James, Daryl Morey has constantly tried to get Paul George to Houston. And again, similar to LeBron James, I wonder how if Paul George is as good of a fit as LeBron James is on the Rockets. Maybe the spacing works a little bit better. He's probably a, a better of a catch-and-shoot guy uh, than LeBron is right now. We know that LeBron wants to play a little bit more off-ball, but again, that's a big transition going from the number one option on, on a team to you know an off-ball shooter. I just don't really see how that's going to work for LeBron. But look, I like this lineup a lot. They don't have to trade away the entire team. They can keep a couple of their bench guys. They'd have enough money to sign Clint Capella. They can keep P.J. Tucker, who is great for the Rockets in the playoffs. I like that lineup a lot. It's a good I think, lineup. I think that lineup actually can beat the Warriors. I was going to ask, Harden, is that George? a warrior-killing lineup right there? I don't know if it's a warrior-killing lineup, but they certainly all have the tools to do so. They have two good, great defenders in Chris Paul and Paul George to stop Steph Curry, hopefully, and Kevin Durant. P.J. Tucker can do a great job shooting corner threes. And Clint Capella did a fantastic job on Draymond Green throughout the entire Western Conference Finals. I think that Rockets lineup could beat the Warriors and actually has a better chance than what they had this year. Rockets, Lakers, Thunder, perhaps another team. Let us know the best landing spot for Paul George. One of the more non-LeBron intriguing storylines this offseason. I, th I think, I still think it's the Thunder. And apparently so does his agent. His agent apparently was walking around the combine telling people that he's already going to re-sign. Now again, agents say a lot of things. I mean, he might just be trying to get more money out of a bunch of different people. But look, again, it just these guys have egos. We know that Paul George has an ego he's had locker room dysfunctions in the past but at the same time like if you're Paul George can you really turn down the opportunity to play basketball with LeBron in LA if given the opportunity I'm not sure I still think the Thunder may end up being his best option but the Lakers are going to give him the most money. We'll see. All right, let's stay with this Rockets theme here. Do they want their free agents back? Yeah, well, according to Daryl Morey, they do, which, you know, again, take what these guys are saying with a grain of salt as of right now. We're only going to give it three heads because I'm sure they want their free agents back. Chris Paul is one of their free agents, and they definitely want him back. We know that they want Clint Capella back as well. And then after that, I mean, they don't really have a lot of big-time free agents. I mean, Trevor Ariza is a 
free agent for them. I mean, they have a couple bench guys who are free agent. Uh, you know, Joe Johnson said he would like to come back. Gerald Green is a free agent as well. So we'll see what happens with the Rockets. But they definitely want Capella and Chris Paul back. They did not spend all this time turning Clint Capella into the player that he is to just let him walk and go to the Suns or something. They're going to try to get him back along with Chris Paul and maybe with LeBron as well. Okay, so three heads there. Finally here at number eight. In fact, not quite finally, but we'll get there. Celtics to keep Rozier and Smart. Yeah, so this is a report that came out last night from The Score with a report from Gary Washburn of the Boston Globe as well. We're giving this one three crying Jordans. The Celtics do indeed want to keep Terry Rozier and Marcus Smart. Now, you might be asking yourself, why, Harris, is this only three heads? Well, I don't totally believe that they're going to keep Terry Rozier. I think that his trade value is at a really good point right now that you could package him in a first-round pick and get a really, really good player. So do it. Maybe so, but we'll see. But as of right now, only three heads. Their plan is to re-sign Smart and not trade Rozier this offseason. They want to give the current group a real run in the title, which isn't too surprising. I mean, if you look at their overall lineup for next year, I mean, it is absolutely stacked. The Celtics lineup in 2019 is just ridiculous. I mean, obviously, you'll have Kyrie Irving there coming back off the injury. Gordon Hayward will be coming back as well. You'll have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum there for the Celtics 2019 lineup. So look, they have a lot of fantastic options. And I think also what's going to carry them into next season, their bench is ridiculous as well. So I think the Celtics have a lot of different different options there. So they'll have another fantastic team if they can keep Terry Rozier and Marcus Smart. All right, into rumor number nine here. Max deal for Kyrie, not a given. Firmly in the rumor category well, here. Today. This one's two heads, and this was a huge report yesterday coming from Mike Gorman. Now, again, this was just him speculating, but he talked a lot about how it's no longer a given that Kyrie Irving is going to get a max contract from the Boston Celtics. And to be totally honest, I'm not crazy. Like, I don't see why the Celtics wouldn't give him a max contract. They spent so much time trying to get a superstar player onto this team. And then finally to get Kyrie Irving, I'm only giving this one two heads. I don't believe this. I, I still think that this is pure speculation from the Celtics play-by-play -play guy. His direct quote was, I think you have to be smart here and judge him based off of his career, which has featured a lot of big time injuries. Now that does have a lot of credit to it. The Celtics and Kyrie Irving have obviously had to deal with injuries this past season. He missed the entire postseason. Kyrie Irving with those knees has been kind of, you know, an issue throughout his entire career, but maybe the Celtics move him for Anthony Davis. So don't yell at me, Celtics fans. I have come up with a trade that would send Kyrie Irving to the Pelicans for Anthony Davis. Drum roll, please. The Ruby Seed trade machine, turn it back on. The engine is rolling, and there it is. Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum, Marcus Morris, and the Celtics 2019 first uh, round pick, which they get from Sacramento, and the Celtics get Anthony Davis. Now, I originally had Jalen Brown in there, along with Kyrie Irving, but uh, fellow NBA, uh, NBA Weekly host Tom Downey told me that, look, the Pelicans are just going to say no to Jalen Brown and hold out for Jason Tatum if the option is on the board. So the only way that the Pelicans are going to trade Anthony Davis is with Jason Tatum included in the deal. So we put together a couple lineups for you guys as well, just to you know push this forward and what the Celtics lineup would look like with Anthony Davis. So here it is. Terry Rozier would take over at the one. Jalen Brown will be there at the two. Gordon Hayward at the three. Al Horford at the four. And then Anthony Davis at the five. Do you know what the crazy thing is about that? You trade Kyrie Irving and Jason Tatum, he is still have an amazing lineup. I mean, that is still without a question a NBA Finals contending lineup. Gordon Hayward, Al Horford, Anthony Davis, and Jalen Brown is an amazing four. And then Terry Rozier, who actually had a really good season whenever uh, uh, Kyrie Irving was out. I like that a lot. I think that that would actually be a really good lineup. But again, I'm not actually going to, you know, they're not going to trade Kyrie Irving. Brandon. Yeah, you're not saying it's going to happen. But if it were to go down, that would be the hypothetical scenario, the hypothetical trade there. So.